Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at decision matrix analysis. Now in this video we'll define the model in full and then we'll take a look at an example. So each and every day we all make decisions. Some of these decisions are simple and don't require much thought such as what to wear or what to have for lunch. Other decisions are more complex and they must be considered in light of a number of criteria. So for example, if you're buying a new car, you might need to consider cost, practicality, performance, reliability, and fuel economy. Now, business decisions can be even more complex again. So suppose you were tasked with finding a new facilities management supplier. It can be tempting to opt for the lowest cost supplier, but other factors need to be considered to ensure you make the best decision. Now, this might include factors such as the length of the contract, any break clauses, the service level the contractor is going to give you, and a whole host of other factors as well. So given all these factors, how can we ensure we make the best decision? Well, the answer to that is a decision matrix can help us. Now, it's a very useful technique to use when there's a number of options to consider but there is no obvious clear choice. Now in this video, we'll look at two types of decision matrices, a simple decision matrix and a weighted decision matrix. So let's start with the simple decision matrix. Now, rather than show you this matrix in an Excel spreadsheet, I'm just going to explain the concept here. If you wanna get going straight away, there's a template you can download using the link below this video. Now, decision matrix can sound like a complex term, but it's really a very simple tool to use. So in this decision matrix you can see here, we're trying to decide which car to buy. Now, to use the matrix, you simply follow these steps. Now, in the leftmost column of the table, list each of the criteria which you wish to evaluate your options. So some of the criteria for a car would be cost, practicality, performance, etc. Um, the next thing you need to do is list the options available to you across the top. So we have three cars, car A, car B, and car C. Not very original. Now next you need to choose a way to score each option against the evaluation criteria. So for example, here we're using a scale between 1 and 5, where 5 being a good score and 1 being a very poor score. So for example, car A has very poor reliability, but having a five here against cost means it's a very inexpensive car. Now, the next thing we need to do once we've filled in all these values is to total them up along the bottom here by adding them, adding each column up. And the option then with the highest score is our winner and our decision in effect has been made. So you can see in this example, car 18, is the clear winner because it scores more highly than car B or car A. Now one of the drawbacks of this simple decision matrix is that not every criteria will have the same importance to us. So for example we might consider reliability to be more important than performance or we might consider price to be more important than all the other factors put together. Now to overcome this and to take this into account we can use a weighted decision matrix. So just as we did in our simple decision matrix, we create a table and in the leftmost column list the criteria against which you wish to evaluate your options. Now to the right of this column, we create another column specifying the weighting or relative importance of each of the criteria using some kind of scale. So for example here we've used the scale of 1 to 5 where 1 is of little importance and 5 is a very important criteria. Now just as before you list the options under consideration across the top row of the table. So the next step, step two, is under each option we create two rows. So one to score the criteria for that option and another to show the total score taking into account 
the weighting. So this is basically this score here multiplied by the weighting. So 1 times 1 gives you 1, 4 times 4 gives you 16, etc. And finally, in step 3, we simply add up our total score for each option. So as you can see here, option 3 is the best as it has the highest score of 75 versus option 1 with a score of 55 and option 2 which scores 35. So to show how a weighted decision matrix can be useful in the real world when you're faced with a slightly more complicated decision, let's consider a business example where we need to se select a supplier for our facilities management. Now in this example we've determined here that cost is the most important factor to consider when choosing a supplier, so we've weighted it A5. Now, other important factors, but not quite as important as cost, include service level, which we've scored as a four, and ease of termination, which we've weighted as a four as well. Now, the other factors we decide to use are contract length, uh, with shorter length contracts scoring higher, and financial strength, with companies with greater financial strength scoring higher. And when we weight our decision matrix like this, then we may end up with a result like this. Now, what's really interesting here is that although cost is our most important factor, the company, which has actually probably the highest cost because the score isn't so good, actually comes out on top overall. And the reason for that is because, yes, the cost is higher, but the service level is going to be excellent and the ease of termination is excellent as well. Certainly much better than the scores you can see here for the contractor where, where their cost so is So this example lowest. really highlights why it's a good idea to use a weighted decision matrix because it prevents us from you know, jumping straight in and going with company A because they have the lowest price, it forces us to evaluate all of the companies against all of the criteria according to some weighting, enabling us to make the best decision. So don't forget, if you'd like to get started creating your own decision matrix, you can download the decision matrix template uh, in Excel using the link below this video. So in summary, Decision matrix analysis enables you to make a rational decision from a number of similar options. It's best to use the tool when the options look fairly similar to each other, yet you want to objectively decide which is the best option. So by using the tool, you ensure all important factors are being considered before an option is selected, and thus it prevents you from potentially jumping to the wrong option. So. That's it for today's lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.